here are your empirical and molecular formula examples. Um, so I'm starting with empirical formula here, and I'm gonna do number one as an example. Um, number two actually combines both concepts, so I'll get to that later in this video. Um, so I'm just gonna start with number one. Um, it says a compound can be found, a, found, a compound is found to be 26.54% potassium, 35.37% chromium, and 38.09% oxygen. What is the empirical formula? So the empirical formula is the most reduced ratio of atoms. So that's what we're going to look for. Um, because they're out of percents, uh, we know percents are out of 100. So it's easiest just to sort of think about this on a... Um, instead of 100%, 100 gram basis, we know that if we had 100 grams, we'd have 26 grams of potassium, 35 grams of chromium, and 38 grams of oxygen. So that's just really the easiest number to work with. You could really do it with any mass, but then there's an additional calculation to find like the percent of that mass. Um, so we're going to start here with um, assuming that it's 100 grams. So I'm going to write, write down my givens, uh, 26.54, and I'm going to, like I said, change it to grams instead of percent of potassium. Uh, my next given is 35.37 grams of chromium. That's an R, and it looks like an H here. Hold on. There we go. And then um, let me move this periodic table down a little bit. Okay. And then the last one was 38... 0 0.09 grams of oxygen. So I'm going to do like little one-step conversions to convert these all to moles using the molar mass from the periodic table. So the molar mass of potassium is 39.0983. I'm just going to use all, oops, all the um, digits that I have on the periodic table. If you have less, um, that's okay. You can use less. Um, I'm just going to set them all up before I do the calculations. So chromium is 51.996. And so just as a reminder, we need our units to cancel. So the grams, that's why I'm putting grams on the bottom and then moles on the top. Uh, the values have to be in moles in order to compare them to another, um, in order to compare them to another element. You can't compare masses. So that's why we're first converting all of these to moles. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these into the calculator. All right, so when I divide those two values for potassium, I get 0 0.67880, um, whoops, moles. That mole unit will disappear, um, but I'm just going to write it for now so that we have a complete answer. All right, the next one, chromium, is 0 0.68024, um, 0, 024, and then that was moles of chromium. And then finally, for oxygen, we have 2.38092. Moles of oxygen. Okay, so the next step, like I said, we're going to compare um, the ratio of atoms. So, in order to compare the ratio with these moles, I'm going to take the smallest value and divide all the rest by that value. So, potassium actually has the smallest one at 0 0.67880. I'm going to divide all of these by that same um, value and um, I'll have my ratio. So obviously this one is one. So that's one potassium. Again, the moles cancel out. So it's one potassium. Uh, chromium is 1.00212, which we need whole numbers. We can't have decimal numbers. And since that's really close to one, we're gonna round it to one. And then for oxygen, we get 3.5. Um, and then what is this oxygen? Yeah. Okay. So 3.5 is not roundable. This one is you you should be really close to a whole number. And if you're not really close to a whole number, um, you're probably going to be really close to a half of a number or like a quarter of a number. 
And then what you have to do is you have to multiply. So I need to multiply 3.5 to get a whole number. Um, in order to do that, I can multiply by two, which gives me seven oxygen. And then whatever I do to one, I have to do to the other. So I'm gonna multiply chromium by two, that gives me two chromium. I'm gonna multiply my potassium by two, that gives me two potassium. So just writing this out, I have potassium two, I have chromium two, and I have oxygen seven. When you write your formula for an empirical formula, it should be recognizable. If it's crazy, if it was like K24, you did something wrong. It should be recognizable. And this is um, Cr2O7 with a two minus is dichromate. It's one of the uh, like less common polyatomic ions because it has a negative two and potassium is in group one, right, right here on the periodic table. Um, that means it has a positive one charge, which means that you would need two of them in order to make those charges cancel. So I have my empirical formula. There's a lot of ways I can tell I'm right. Um, one of them being I, I know that compound because I know the polyatomic ion dichromate. Um, so again, if, if I got something crazy like K23, <laughs> that would mean that my 23 potassiums would have to cancel with that one two negative. That's, that's how I can tell that um, something might be wrong. If you did these calculations here and they all wound up at a whole number, then great, you don't have to do this multiplying step. You only have to do this multiplying step if one of your numbers comes out to like a half. You can't round that, you do have to multiply to get the full number. All right, so that is the empirical formula. So again, the empirical formula for here was potassium dichromate. Okay, moving on to molecular formula. So this is a shortened molecular formula problem. Most of what you're gonna see is gonna be a combination of empirical and molecular formula, but this is just to get the scale down for molecular formula. So it gave us the empirical formula and start of, instead of asking us to find it. Um, and then it told us that the molecular mass, not the empirical formula mass, but the molecular formula mass was 92 grams. And then it's asking what is the molecular formula. So first step is I need to find the mass of my empirical formula. Then I'm going to compare it to the mass of my molecular formula, um, which should hopefully give me a whole number or very close to one. And then I can determine um, the uh, chemical formula for my molecular formula. All right, so nitrogen, um, oh, I didn't put a periodic table on this slide. Let me go back and look at this one. So nitrogen right here, so 14.007. And I only have one of those. And then oxygen from that other one was 15.998. But I have two of those, so I'm going to multiply that out. And I get 31.996. Um, and then again, this stays 14.007. So now I'm going to add those together to get my molar mass and I get 46.003, so grams per mole, that's my molar mass of NO2. So now I need to take this molar mass and compare it to the one I was given up here, so the 92. So I wanna, so I wanna see how many times my molar mass of my empirical formula can go into my um, molecular formula. So I'm just gonna divide them see how many times it goes into it. And your calculator answer should be like 1.99987. Again, very close to two. So I can go ahead and round it to two. That's not my answer, however. That's just um, how many times bigger, I guess, the molecule is. I don't wanna say bigger. How many times uh, like more moles there are, um, like of, of an atom. That's an interesting, how do I say that? Um, Basically, you're going to take the formula, the NO2, and you're going to multiply it by 2, like throughout. So I'm going to do ten, 2 times my NO2, which is going to give me N2O4. So that is my answer for molecular formula. So an empirical formula is the most reduced form. That's why this is our empirical formula. This is a molecular formula. It, it's like a multiple of your empirical formula. Or, um, sometimes we call it the, like the true formula. An empirical formula and molecular formula could be the same. NO2 does exist. That's a real compound. Um, that's not 
So it, count, it qualifies as both an empirical and a molecular formula. N2O4 only qualifies as a molecular formula because it can be reduced. All right, so doing a combo problem, this is the way you'll really see it. Because um, typically we do this kind of stuff when you are, when you're like, um, trying to like analyze something that you found or something that you made and you're getting like a percent composition of each of the elements through something like chromatography or something like that. So you're getting percents of each elements in the substance and then you can do these sort of calculations to figure out what the compound is. Um, so here we're going to start with the empirical formula first and then the second part will be in determining the molecular formula. So uh, my empirical formula, again, I'm going to do exactly what I did last time where I'm going to assume that it's a, it's a, it's a hundred grams just to sort of make my calculations easier. Again, you could really do it with any mass, um, but it requires then another step. So that's why I don't. All right. So carbon is 12.011. Does this one go farther than that? No. Okay. Okay, so grams of carbon to one mole of carbon. I'm going to do hydrogen. Is this 1.0079? Okay. Grams of hydrogen to one mole of hydrogen. Again, I'm just going to convert all of these to moles um, so that I can compare them to each other, right? We can't compare in grams. So I'm going to calculate all those out, and I'll be right back. All right, so I have 33.3 moles of carbon, 6.64 moles of hydrogen, and 33.34 moles of oxygen. So I'm going to divide them all by the smallest one, which is the carbon one, so the 3.33. The and obviously with this one I have one carbon, with this one I have one oxygen, and then you could put that into the calculator. You're probably going to get like 2.01, um, so two hydrogen. So when I'm writing this, um, when I'm writing this out in my uh, in my uh, like chemical formula format, I have one carbon, two hydrogen, one oxygen. Um, I know that that's the formaldehyde compound. You might not know that, um, but you could Google it, look it up, just to make sure it's correct or something like that. But um, that is the formaldehyde compound. It looks like this with a double bond. Great. Um, now we're going to move on. It didn't actually ask for empirical formula, right? We needed that in order to compare the molar mass of the molecular formula to it. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate the molar mass of uh, formaldehyde. So carbon is 12.011. Uh, um, hydrogen is one point. 0079, but I'm going to multiply that by 2 because I have two of them. So I'm going to use 2.0158, and then oxygen is 15.998. So I'm going to add all those together, and I get 30.02025. Um, so that's my molar mass of my empirical formula. So now I'm going to compare that to my molecular formula mass. So 60 um, grams per mole. I'm going to divide that by my empirical formula mass. And again, this has to be a whole number. I can see that 30 goes into 60 twice, so that's 2. So I'm going to take my empirical formula, my CH2O, and I'm going to multiply it by 2 and get C2H4. O2, um, which is uh, acetic acid. That's not actually usually how we write acetic acid. We usually write it as HC2H3O2. Um, uh, sometimes you'll see it written like this also. Um, but there we go. There's our molecular formula. So those combo ones are definitely more work, and you definitely have to make sure you're answering the question. It's super important on these to read the questions fully and answer them appropriately. If you guys need more examples, please let me know. Um, otherwise, have fun.